still day three. So I've gotten lips, it's moving to the right by 10 pixels every frame, and I'm screen wrapping it. I will prove it to you, there we go. All right, let's talk about changing speed. So we know that if this were one, it would be moving slower. We know if it was negative three, it would be moving to the left instead of the right. So one way of thinking about the meaning of this number is this is actually the x speed because it's the amount the x position is changing by over time, which is the definition of speed. So instead of making this a number, we can make it a variable so that that way speed can also change. So I'm gonna make a new variable up here called x speed. And then just like my other variables, I'm gonna set it here in setup. So x speed is gonna start at 10. Um, did I make it a float? Good. And now I can say x equals x plus x speed. Okay, when I run it, you'll notice that it works the same way that it did before because x speed is 10. However, now if I wanted to, I could say x speed equals x speed plus, let's do, let's make it get faster very slowly. Um, 0.1 is actually a double and you can't add a double into a float without casting. However, if you put an F right afterwards, this means 0.1 floating point. Um, so that, that whenever you're using variables that are floats uh, and you wanna add or multiply by a decimal number, you should put an F at the end for that reason. Okay, so just like last time, Whenever we loop draw, we are taking the x coordinate and we're adding the x speed. Now we're also taking the x speed and we're adding in a little extra change in the x speed. You might call it the x acceleration. So there we go, very exciting. Oh my God, what is gonna happen? This is blowing my mind. I think I might have a seizure. I think we just got to call it a day. Okay, so um, that was neat. Um, let's go ahead and, and uh, delete this line. And let's think, instead of screen wrapping, how could we make it bounce off the left hand and right hand sides of the screen? So we want to keep these two if statements because this if statement is testing, have we hit the right hand side of the screen? And we still want to do that. It's just that if we hit the right hand side of the screen, we don't want to change the x coordinate. We don't want to move it all the way back to the left. Instead, we want to change its speed. We want to change how it's moving. Because think about what a bounce is. When you're bouncing, the moment you do the bounce, your actual position didn't change at all. My ball is moving and I hit the right hand side. And in that instant, it's still just sitting there. What's changed is the direction that it's moving in. It was moving right, and then when it hits, we want to start it moving left. So in other words, if x speed is 10, we want to be adding in 10 every time, but then when we hit here, we want to suddenly start subtracting 10 every time. So the way to do that is we'd say, well, you could do this. You could say x speed equals negative 10, and that would just directly set it to be negative 10. Let's look at that. Cool. Okay, but now, now it's just screen wrapping. Um, and then here we could say x speed equals positive 10. Because if it, if it hit the left-hand side of the screen, it must have been moving to the left, which means the x speed must have been negative. So that means we'd want to set it to be positive to force it to move right again. So now we've got this nice kind of bouncing happening. Um, I'm going to suggest something other than this. What's a little bit nicer than this is let's do x speed equals um, x speed times negative one. Or uh, a, a kind of shorter way to write the same thing would be x speed equals negative x speed. Think about what this is doing. Let's pretend x speed is 10. So if x speed is 10, then negative x speed is going to be negative 10. And we save negative 10 as the new speed. So in other words, we've taken a speed of 10 and turned it into negative 10. Okay, let's think about the other way. What if x speed is negative 10? If this part is negative 10, the opposite of negative 10 is gonna be positive 10, and we save that as the new x speed. 
So a nice way of thinking about this line is it flip-flops between negative and positive, or you could think about this as reverse the x speed, which is the same thing as reversing the direction. So the reason I like this is because it's, it's kind of very general purpose. You can write the same thing in both places. So there we go, now it's just bouncing. You should pause the video right now and add in a line of code that will make the, uh, the ellipse move vertically, and then you should add some lines of code that will make it bounce off the bottom and top of the screen. Okay, go ahead and pause the video while I take a bite of snack. Okay, I hope it's paused. Okay, that's really worked. Last but not least, let's make some gravity. So here's what I want to do. I want to start my y speed at zero, um, which means it's actually not going to move at all. Uh, not move at all up and down anyway. All right, so what is gravity? Gravity is an acceleration that pulls you downwards. So it's increasing your downward speed. So if we want to recreate that in our program here, what we want is we want for y speed to, well, let's think about this. Should y speed be going up or should y speed be going down? I guess if we want to move the ellipse downwards, that means the y coordinates are increasing, which means we want the y speed to increase by a little bit every time. So let's make y speed go up by 0.1 float. Okay. And here we go. Well, it certainly doesn't quite look like gravity yet, or maybe it's sort of like gravity on the moon. Let's change these values a little bit. Let's make me do 0.6. Ah, this is definitely looking a little bit nicer. You might be noticing something that's not quite right here. Ordinarily, when an object bounces, it does not gain energy and bounce higher and higher. Um, so let's do this. I'm going to have it so that whenever it bounces off the bottom of the screen, it loses a little bit of its speed. Um, so let's first find the place where we are bouncing off the bottom of the screen. That must be here when the Y coordinate is bigger than 600. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse the Y speed, um, but I'm going to do two other things. I'm going to set the y coordinate equal to 600. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the y speed and I'm going to make it 98% uh, of what it used to be. So if you imagine taking y speed and multiplying it by 0.98 with an f for float, um, that's like saying, if I multiplied it by 1, it wouldn't change. That's like saying 100% of what it used to be. So now I'm saying take 98% of what it used to be, and that's the new y speed. So not only are we changing the direction to go up, but it's going up a little bit slower than it was going down. Okay, let's check it out. So it doesn't see, oh, is it still going up? Hmm. Well, not to worry, let's just remove more energy. So now I'll make it 90% of the downward speed. Now when we run it, that's looking a little bit nicer. Um, let's go ahead and set gravity to be a little higher as well. And I'm gonna dampen this a little more, so maybe 70%. Yeah, that looks okay.
Okay, enjoy the exercises. Come back next time and we'll do stuff with the keyboard and the mouse.